we pulling into Armour's Pro here in just a couple minutes on a Monday following a large skip load. Hence my round face. Use all those carbs to train heavy for the first couple days of the week. Hit some back and chest. Rear delts. Armbrus Pro Gym, Monday. Still training back and chest, rear delts, but instead of three days a week, because it's prep time, we're up to five days a week. It's getting warm here. Got Mrs. Skip watching. Form. This is the place to train. It gets real, real busy, especially in the dumbbell area. You can see how close everything is to each other or to everything. The cool thing is, is if you train here at Armbrus, your gym etiquette is usually quite good. So even though someone may walk by relatively close, they're aware of you and they're watching out for you. The same thing happens in a 24 hour fitness. I'm probably going to get one of my arms run into, I'm going to drop the dumbbell on my face, and then I'm going to have to throw a temper tantrum. Here on Incline Dumbbell Presses, I'm trying to move some weight. I'm trying to go up as much as I can. Keep in mind that moving as much weight as I can is relative. For me, I'm not terribly strong anymore. But that still doesn't mean that I don't want to move as much weight as I possibly can, especially early in the week when I'm dieting to take advantage of coming off of my Sunday skip load. Notice I'm not locking out at the top, and I typically do that when I want to move a little bit more weight or get more reps. And I'll tell you a little something about Armbrus Pro Gym Dumbbells, and anybody who's been there will tell you. Where most franchise gyms, like 24-Hour Fitness and the old Bally's and things like that, would make their dumbbells lighter than what they actually said they were, Armbrus went the other way, because these sons of bitches are heavy. Okay, moving to an exercise that I am not terribly um, routine with, the incline barbell press. The main reason that I don't like this exercise is it hurts my shoulders. I can do them on a Smith machine, I can do hammer inclines, I can do incline dumbbell presses, but free weight barbell incline presses for some reason 
irritate my shoulders. And for the record, my back is arched, shoulder blades are pinched together. I'm doing everything right. But to really hit my upper chest and get that stress off of my front delts, I have to remain light with my weight. These are garage doors at Armbrus. There's a lot of sled pulling, tire flipping, strongman stuff that goes on outside of those doors. That's why us bodybuilders tend to stay on the inside of them. Again, staying light on this exercise, this might only be, I'm guessing 185, something like that. There's a couple couple cookies on there and that's about it, I think. Try to get a hesitation at the bottom. I just cannot do this exercise heavy anymore. I used to be able to, even when the first longevity DVD came out, heavier anyway, might not have been heavy, but for me to get to 225 or 275, was pretty routine back then, especially if I was in the off season. If I grabbed 225 these days and tried to incline press it, I'd rip a titty. Moving on to pec deck flies. Again, not very heavy. You can see the weight stack there. Very deliberate. Kind of a stretch and squeeze sort of philosophy. I got to be able to get full contraction. I prefer to be able to hold those reps at the top. A lot of times it depends on when in my chest workout I do this exercise as to whether I hold at the top or if I just do more fluid repetitions. Typically if I'm doing this exercise early to mid chest workout then I will hold for that contraction at the top. If I'm doing them late in my chest workout or even as a finisher then the reps are more fluid and they're more constant. I don't necessarily think they're quicker as far as the motion for the concentric and eccentric part of the movement, but I don't hold that contraction at the top. This is a real good indication of my condition one day after a pretty big skip load. Very full, contractions are very strong, great pumps, but watery. You can see it on my face, because my face rounds out, you can see it throughout my condition as well. Obviously as the week progresses. I deplete glycogen, water moves from sub-Q, and I basically start moving water out of my body, 
Uh, by Wednesday or Thursday, I may lose some of that fullness, but I'm drier, much drier, and much tighter. Looks like there's a quick shot of my cameraman there, my son Tate in the white shirt. <laughs> Got to give props to Riley and Tate, my son and daughter, for doing a excellent job of getting all this filming done for me. Here I'm not holding the contractions much at the top. Obviously fatigue is setting in. This is one of the last, if not the last set, one of the last couple sets of this exercise. So I'm going for more of a fluid rep without holding that contraction. One of my favorite finishing exercises right here is the vertical I don't know if this is a flex uh, machine, but they're all comparable. As with any other body part, when I finish a body part, my last exercise typically is something that is fixed, like a machine, a Smith machine, something like that, so that I don't have to balance out or work too hard at balancing out a bar or dumbbells. There's so much fatigue at this point that I'm just trying to cheat a little bit more of a stimulus at the end, kind of finish off that muscle group as much as possible without having to worry about balancing anything out or hitting myself in the head with a dumbbell. Another thing you're going to notice, especially from this angle, you may think that, that those handles are hitting her pretty high, and they are. A little bit higher than myself, but I still force in an exercise like this, those handles high and set the seat low. I do this a lot with hammer strength machines as well, so that I can force my elbows up. I am an elbow flared kind of guy when it comes to chest. I don't like elbows to be tucked. They need to be high and wide. And keeping those handles higher makes it easier to keep the elbows higher. All right, moving into back, the first exercise is what I call the amusement ride. I don't know who at hoist thought up some of these movements or some of these pieces of equipment. And as good as they work, and they do work very, very well, that's a lot of movement. Somebody smarter than me was able to put that together. I'm always careful with exercises like this or pieces of equipment like this to not grab too wide on the handles at the top. You'll notice I stay in kind of close. I'm more concerned about where they end up at the end. You can imagine if your hands were wide to begin with, if you look at the other bars, they just end up too wide at the bottom. So I start with more of a narrow grip then they end up just outside the shoulder width at the bottom.
When it comes to grips for back exercises, I'm a big believer in trying to stay just outside of that shoulder width area. I think that going too wide limits range of motion, and I think going too narrow uh, does the same thing. When you go too narrow, there ends, ends up being a lot of bicep involvement, and you can't what I call finish reps. And when I say finish reps when it comes to back, that means being able to get retraction, the rhomboids and middle traps, to be able to pull the shoulder blades into the middle of the back. You'll see a lot of people train back and not get that retraction. And that is incredibly limiting when it comes to back development. I do not have a great back, admittedly. But that's part of the reason I have to pay attention that much closer to my back training, much like I do with my shoulder training, because both of them suck. Moving on to bent rows here, just starting light. Even though I have hit two exercises for back, my lower back has not had to support my upper torso yet while I have been doing a back movement, so I'm always careful. I've injured my back too many times to not be careful. So I move into anything involving my lower back cautiously and carefully. You may notice in a couple of these angles, when I do bent rows, there isn't this huge stretch at the bottom. I'm focused more on the top of the movement because I feel that it puts my lower back in a pretty vulnerable position. Not only the more I stretch my back, but the more that I bend over and the lower the bar gets down my thigh. If it's getting down to my kneecap, I know I'm getting to about as far as I want to go. Anything further than that is concerning or becomes concerning. It's very possible that I could have a very or better back development if I was to get more of a stretch and increase that range of motion. The problem becomes the cost to benefit. These days I have to be very, very calculated, very, very careful when it comes to my lower back. It may have been three and a half years since I've had a major herniation, but I remember shitting in the shower like it was yesterday. This is probably one of my favorite pieces of equipment at Armbrist. The angle here makes the stretch the heaviest and hardest part of the movement. It gets easier as you come back into the contracted position or retraction of the rhomboids middle traps, middle back. What that does is it allows for full contraction even as you start to fatigue later in the set. An exercise like this, on a piece of equipment like this, where it supports my lower back so much more, will allow me to force more of a stretch in my back than when I do something like a bent over barbell row, a bent over T-bar row, that sort of thing.
And as a finisher today, finishing up with high long pulley rows. Now there's a foot platform right about where my wrist straps hang that you can put your feet on. I keep my feet low and the reason for that it's actually twofold. Number one, because it's a finisher it's going to make me limit the weight that I'm pulling so that I get full stretch, full contraction which is typical when I do a finishing move. I don't want it to be ridiculously heavy, I don't want it to be a partial range of motion, I want full stretch, full squeeze to kind of finish that muscle off. But if you put your feet, you can see the pl foot platform a little bit better in this angle. If you put your feet up on that platform and the angle of pull where the cable and the handle is coming from is going to be the same as if you were sitting flat and pulling a regular long pulley rope. So by keeping your feet low, that angle then comes higher or from a higher start position down and into your lats. If you go too heavy on this movement, it'll literally just pull you off of your seat. So that's where it's limiting. I can get higher reps, I can get fuller reps, fuller stretch, fuller squeeze. And just as in the off season, I'm going to finish up my back workout with rear delts. I don't get too fancy and I don't get too complicated. I don't add a lot of variety. I tend to prefer to finish rear delts after back with a rear fly machine. If I use dumbbells, I only feel like there's enough stress on the top one third maybe one half of the movement and not as much on the bottom. When I use a fly machine or a reverse pec deck, there's stress on the rear delts straight from the start to the contraction. You'll notice in this angle too that there's very little movement at the elbow. When I explain the best way to do this movement to clients, I always tell them not to focus on where their hands are as much as where their elbows are. I'm pushing the handles out in front of me so that I can get my elbows closer together at the start position and getting them back as far as I can. Finishing with partials like I do on a lot of things.